Hello and welcome to TUSP Conversations. I'm your host Tanish, and today's podcast is about the startup challenge. And our guest today is an ICT industry veteran, Manoj Chok. He has managed and led businesses to achieve pole positions across technology and services. Over the last 40 years, he is credited with being the pioneer of the internet revolution in India. He is also recognized as the top 10 individual who has shaped the last decade of the Indian IT industry. He is also the distinguished alumni of IIT Kharagpur. Manoj, welcome to TUSP Conversations. Thank you very much, Danish, and it's my great honor and my great pleasure to talk to you today. Uh, Manoj, before I started this conversation, I was just going through the internet, finding out where India stands in this entire ecosystem. And one number which stands up, uh, it's a huge world. We are at amongst the top three largest startup ecosystem in the world. And, and it says that we will be witnessing year on year growth, uh, could be 12%, could be 15%, the numbers can vary. But at this stage now, um, you know, what is the current scenario of the startups in India and how far have we come, say, for the last couple of years, if you look at it? Well, you know, Danish, if I were to kind of go back eight years, uh, I think we've made huge strides uh, in terms of our entire ecosystem. And I must congratulate uh, each and every entrepreneur who's kind of raised his hand uh, and made uh, a success of what they are doing uh, in many ways will be incredibly successful going forward in the future as well. Uh, If you just look at the total valuation today of our startups, it is at a whopping $450 billion. And just look at unicorns, uh, you know, startups with a market cap of a billion dollars. Believe it or not, we've crossed the 100 mark, uh, you know, earlier this year. And by 2025, uh, you know, we believe there'll be 250 unicorns in India, uh, just look at the kind of uh, investments that are being made you know, in this sector. Uh, if you were to look at uh, VC capital, more than $130 billion has come in from a very minuscule amount just eight years ago. So I think if you look at this journey as an eight-year journey, uh, we have compounded annual growth rate of much more than the 15% that mm-hmm. we are talking about going forward in the future. Super excited, fantastic place to be in. Hmm. And, and so, you know, you've been, um, like I said in my introduction, that you've been one of the top individuals who've seen this growth. Uh, what were the challenges which you've seen in, at that point? And now what are the biggest challenges you, you see in the coming year of, say, about 2023? And where do we stand? And how do we uh, navigate this entire situation? You know, Danish, at one point in time, the big challenge was access to capital, which I think over the last decade has eased out very significantly. And this was not just true for startups. It was true for anyone uh, who was attempting to do business, even mature companies. So we know that capital was a big constraint. Guys who had capital always had the opportunity to outperform and outsmart everyone else. That Mm. has certainly changed over the last few years. Now it is about, are you truly delivering value to your customer or to your consumer segment? And secondly, do you have the wherewithal, the go-to market and the prowess to be able to create significant success through revenue growth? So I think uh, if you look at the challenge, it has certainly moved away from capital to product and go to market. Mm. Uh, and, and can you recall the story? I mean, the best way which I feel that, you know, if from your own personal experience, somebody walked up to you and took your advice that, look, this is the situation I was facing. Presently, this is where I stand. Uh, you know, uh, do you remember an in- incident which you want to share with our listeners? Uh, yep, many incidents, but there's one which will always stand out in my mind. Uh, huh. A few years ago, uh, I was uh, uh, talking to a uh, very motivated uh, group of professionals uh, and they said that they wanted to take part uh, or, you know uh, of a global challenge where the mm. customer was turning around and saying that look I'm a laggard in my industry uh, because I'm not digitally savvy enough uh, mm. and I want to go and make sure that I have the most endearing digital engagement platform that I build for my customers. Uh, and, you know, those were early days uh, uh, around digital. 
And mm. obviously, uh, you know, the digital natives were doing a much better job uh, than brick and mortar incumbents, if you will. This was a brick and mortar incumbent who was being challenged by, you know, the digital innovators. Mm. Um, so, uh, you know, these young uh, entrepreneurs, uh, many of them uh, mm. teamed up and said, okay, let's go after this challenge. It looks very exciting. Uh, you know, there is a big a prize to be won at the end of this. Uh, mm. And uh, many of the teams actually started studying what the existing competitors were doing, which means mm. that they went on online uh, and, you know, started looking at everyone else's website. What are the kind of features? Uh, you know, how they are trying to digitally engage. Uh, what are the bells and whistles and so on? Uh, and one of the young teams came to me and said, Manoj, what do you think we should be doing? And I said, look, I belong to the hybrid generation. I was mm. born in the brick and mortar world, mm. but I make my living in the digital world. Mm. Uh, so I asked them a very simple question. I said, you know what, while we may be engaging digitally, but we are actually working with physical customers. They are living human beings. So have you guys actually walked the streets and asked people what they expect from this brand? What is it that they don't like? What is it that they believe this brand should be doing so that it becomes more endearing to them? Mm. They, there yeah. was stunned silence in the room. Mm. And then they all looked at each other and said, Manoj, we actually forgot about that. We haven't walked the streets. Whatever we have done, we have done digitally through our screens. For the next 15 days, they were out in the streets, out on the roads, talking to normal people, getting their feedback. And then they came back and translated that into something which was truly remarkable. So I'll never forget that incident that sometimes we get so bogged down, so overawed, uh, you know, by this whole digital magic that we forget that at the end of the day, we are still serving physical customers. Hmm. No, but okay, so the, the, when you were saying that, in, you know, the shift has been from brick and mortar to the digital age, and then you have to go out in the market and understand that who is your real end customer, right? Now, recently, if, you've, if you must have noticed, and, and our listeners would have also noticed that the, uh, the coming of the bots, right? That's again going back so... Do you think that that's a challenge which uh, one has to overcome or that's the need of the hour? But if, you know, I, yeah, hmm. uh, let me see that, for example, you log on to a website for banking, right? And right at the bottom, you will see there's a pop-up coming and there's simple answers which you have to answer. But that human interaction is going. Is that a challenge or is that the way I'm looking at it? How do you see it? I think the best businesses in the world will provide an immersive experience which cuts across both physical and digital channels. It is not about one channel versus the other. We have seen many digital businesses going and acquiring brick and mortar uh, uh, you know, premises, if you will. And likewise, we have found brick and mortar businesses transforming themselves and creating new digital channels. The important thing is, that when a customer transcends from the physical to the digital channel or from the digital to the physical channel, is the experience constant and consistent? So I think it is about delivering an experience irrespective of the channel, physical or digital, which will decide the winners of tomorrow. I see. And how do you, I mean, when you say that the it should be an immersive experience, what are the things which uh, they have to look out for? How do you create that experience? I think that is what the magic is all about. Uh, so it is about making sure that when a customer comes to you through a specific channel, for example, if a, if a customer approaches you through WhatsApp and mm. then later on they make a phone call and come into your call center, how do you make sure that the thread of that connection is not lost? And then at a later point in time, if they turn up at one of your physical stores, how do you make sure that the conversation continues from where it last stopped? So I think the immersive experience is all about making sure that it is omni-channel and there's a single thread of conversation. Many times we have had experiences, and I'm sure that 
you'll chuckle to yourself, Danish. When people keep asking you the same question again and again, mm, mm, and you almost feel like tearing your hair apart and saying, oh my God, I wish I had my Janam Patri on Google because <laughs> I need to keep responding again and again to the yeah. same questions. That's incredibly frustrating. So immersive experiences make sure that you have an engaging conversation which continues in a single thread ad infinitum. Yeah. Also, okay, so shifting my conversation to this other side that, you know, um, uh, there are companies which are coming up. Uh, I'm not taking any names right now, but edtech companies have, uh, during the pandemic, they came up, they made a uh, lot of jobs work being created. And suddenly we saw this decline which was happening. And that's part of the startup world which we are talking of. Now, that that's a huge challenge. And, and I'm sure there are, uh, industry-wise, this issue would be facing. Now, in my opinion, that is an issue, right? How do you see it? How how do you, what, what's your advice and how do you navigate, navigate that challenge? You know, at the end of the day, the reality is when you, uh, when you are in a business which is founded on technology, you have made a very conscious choice at that point in time to ride the tiger. Once you've decided to ride the tiger, you cannot get off. And you know that there are risks of doing so. I think the most important question one has to answer to oneself is that are you truly delivering value to your stakeholders? And is that value meaningful enough? And many times what we find is that a specific value proposition is very well accepted up to a certain point in time. And then because of external changes, because of changes in customer behavior, because of changes in customers' demand pattern, our value proposition gets diluted. So how do you make sure that you're ahead of the curve? And then how do you make that transition? Understanding the inflection points and riding those inflection points becomes very critical when you're in a business which is founded on technology. And businesses will wax and wane and quicker so, you know, particularly if they are powered by digital. So this is something we need to accept and we need to be incredibly agile so that we can ride and succeed in the next wave. So if our business was purely digital at one point in time, recognizing mm. that because of external changes, it's going to be hybrid and no longer just digital and therefore requires us to create a business model whether directly or through partnerships or through an ecosystem so that we can ride both the digital and physical worlds. That is what the future is going to be. Yeah. And how do you see, you know, in this entire the startup challenge, which is happening, right? And then suddenly we see this uh, coming of metaverse, right? How do you see that part, right? And, and there are a lot of businesses who say that, okay, this is the next big thing which is going to happen, be it in retail, uh, be it in your shopping experiences, you want to go and buy a car, you don't have to actually go to a store, you enter the metaverse. What, Again, what's Danish, your thought on it? Yeah, yeah very well said, Danish. Um, uh, and I was just reflecting as you were talking about the metaverse. Uh, and I know that maybe a couple of years from now, we would be having this conversation in the metaverse as well, rather yeah, than just yeah. doing a, a voice podcast. The yeah. reality of life is that it is about customer engagement and providing that experience. And the belief is, and rightfully so, that the metaverse will provide a much superior, uh, 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 you know, uh, ability uh, for human beings to talk to each other, to engage with each other, or to engage with products and services that we so desire going forward in the future. Uh, so in the future, Danish, it may not be you and I conversing. It will be mm. your avatar and my avatar in the metaverse having this conversation. And that is what reality is going to be. I'm very excited by the opportunities uh, that Metaverse is going to throw up. Uh, I think it's going to help ease a lot of hazardous jobs, which people have to do today, uh, just because of the greater meaning and support and help that they would be able to provide, whether it is in terms of training and skilling of human beings, whether it is in terms of testing products. In the future, products will first be designed in the Metaverse. So you could test them in very tough conditions before doing the prototypes and before designing those products. Uh, and you spoke about a wonderful uh, you know, example on retail. So technology is going to help us engage 
more meaningfully in a more realistic fashion so that our experiences are as near real as possible. And I'm very excited by the opportunity. Mm. Uh, okay, uh, you know, you've been uh, talking about customer engagement, meaningful uh, uh, contribution, adding value. Uh, what are the few things which one needs to keep in mind when you're thinking of all these three, four things? You know, the most, yeah, yeah, let me say that it boils down to, it boils down to what? You know, at the end of the day, it boils down to where we began this conversation, driving value, delivering outcomes being differentiated enough to be recognized by communities and customers. So at one end, it is about the product, its value proposition. Is it fulfilling a genuine need? Importantly, does the startup have a larger purpose than just creating wealth? I think these are questions which are very important to answer. I think when one comes onto the ground level, Tanish, what is incredibly important to understand is that does a startup have a very effective go-to-market strategy? Uh, you might say, Manoj, you're coming from 50,000 feet, you know, you're coming bump, you know, zero feet on the ground, because that is where the rubber meets the road. So I think future success is going to be determined, not, not just by the product and what it delivers, but also the ability of the organization to effectively go to market. And I think that is what, what is going to differentiate the winners from the losers. Hmm. Uh, my final question to you, uh, how do you see diversity in, in the startup world, right? I mean, uh, men, women, LGBTQ, right? Where does this fit in? At the end of the day, organizations will hire the best people. Uh, that is where we are going to file the water leveling. It is not going to be about setting quotas uh, and so on and so forth. This is not a political system. It is about delivering value to customers. And I think that diverse points of view are incredibly important because at the end of the day, you are serving diverse communities. So I think automatically uh, and not just structurally, organizations will become much more inclusive going forward in the future because at the end of the day, they have to meet the demands of a very diverse world. So it's not going to be about going and setting targeted hiring. It is going to be about how do I best serve communities? And therefore, if I'm not inclusive, I will not be able to do a superior job. Hi, Manoj, on that note, thank you very much for uh, taking our uh, guest and, and all our listeners to see what the entire challenge is and how do you navigate this thing. So thank you very much for being part of the TOSB Conversations. Thank you very much, Danish, for having me and I've enjoyed this conversation.